We have a couple of guests in studio to talk about a uh, story making uh, making the news quite a bit uh, here in Lubbock, surrounding Lubbock County, in the medical examiner's office uh, here in uh, Lubbock County. And uh, joining me in studio is uh, attorney uh, Michael Kerensky and uh, also uh, Dr. Lu- Luisa Flores uh, joining me in studio. Uh, welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for coming in. Let, let's set sort of the uh, the groundwork. Uh, Dr. Flores, uh, you're the former deputy uh, medical examiner uh, for Lubbock County. You have filed a lawsuit uh, against, I, I believe, Lubbock County and uh, the former medical examiner. Lay the groundwork for us and, and tell us uh, why you're taking legal action. Well, good morning. Um, first, I want to thank thank everyone, my family, friends, people that I don't even know um, sending messages of encouragement and thank you for all their prayers. Um, My lawyer filed a lawsuit on my behalf uh, last Wednesday, August 19, uh, because my former boss, the chief medical examiner of Lubbock County, retaliated heavily against me because I filed a complaint to the district attorney, uh, to the commissioners, and also human resources. Uh, In good faith, I filed this complaint because I was seeing a lot of illegal activities. Uh, I went and talked to them and really asked them to conduct a proper investigation. The first thing they told me was that they will have to inform Dr. Natarajan about my complaint. I told them, where in the world do you start an investigation by giving heads up to the person that is going to be investigated? Mm -hmm. And who told you that? Was that the district attorney's office, or was that the Lubbock County commissioners, or who who told you that's what they were? That, that's where they were going to start. It was it was a Mr. George in the human resource department, and this is one of the fatal flaws of uh, of what led to this lawsuit. Is Dr. Flores was looking for a solution. She was looking to fix the problem, and instead of doing an investigation of Dr. Natarajan's illegal activity, they turned it over to the Human Resources Department, which immediately started an investigation of Dr. Flores to try and manufacture some reason to get rid of her. Why why do you think that they were trying – it sounds like what you're saying is that they were trying to protect him uh, on this. Why do you think they would be doing that? You know, I've asked myself that question just – as an observer of this, as the lawyer representing Dr. Flores, I can't figure it out. I cannot figure out why the, why the county would just on a knee-jerk basis, without asking any of the right questions, without doing any kind of investigation, without allowing her to follow up on her grievance, without looking at her documents, would just on, just say, we're going to back Dr. Natarajan and we're going to retaliate against Dr. Flores. I, I hope this lawsuit answers that question. The, the illegal activity that uh, you had witnessed uh, and that you took to the DA's office, what did that illegal activity uh, include? Well, those specific facts you can find in my lawsuit. Um, I did report specific findings to the DA, and I told him, even if you don't believe a single word of what I'm saying, what I'm asking you is to conduct a proper investigation. Do you think they did a uh, proper investigation? No. Where do you think, uh, last week, uh, the medical examiner uh, responded to your lawsuit and uh, brought up a lot of questions uh, that uh, the Lubbock media has brought up uh, as well. Uh, and included in that uh, is that uh, uh, you were doing some things that were wrong uh, and that you were under or had been under investigation uh, in the past and that you were an illegal immigrant 
into uh, this country, uh, which uh, y'all have provided documentation. That's not true. Uh, but wh- where does where did he get that information, in your opinion, or do you think that they're just making things up? He provided his exhibits of evidence from articles printed from the Internet, like it's as if everything that you find in the Internet is true. Um, I was born in Colombia. I came here legally. I am in the process of becoming an American citizen. I have my green car, which is valid. I have been doing all the things the legal way. I have worked hard to stay here and to be able to become an American citizen. So his claim that I'm an illegal immigrant is completely false. The second thing he mentioned was that I was arrested in France. I was never arrested in France. I went to um, France, arrived in the Gaulle uh, airport, but I was not allowed in because it was my fault. I didn't know that I needed a visa to enter uh, Paris or France. So I never even went beyond immigration. I just had to turn back. Right. The third allegation is that I'm a convicted felon. I have never been convicted of any crime. The, there, were some, there was a charge that was filed against me. Once they figured out that I was being a, a victim of my husband's frauds because he's in federal jail, the case was dismissed and actually completely expunged. Yeah, and more directly to your question, of what, what was the source of information that Dr. Nataraj relied upon back when Dr. Flores was fighting her way through this false allegation that she had uh, committed mortgage fraud, which was really something her husband did, and she successfully defended that. But, of course, there was news about it because she was an assistant medical examiner in, in, in Houston and, and was, couldn't work while this was all pending. Uh, so there was news. The main source of information Dr. Natarajan used was an anonymous comment posted by somebody. He doesn't know who it is. We don't know who it is. I mean, on the Internet, there's a term for people. They're called trolls. Right. Uh, now, I, I don't think that's true of everybody who posts a comment, but I can tell you this guy's a troll. Because everything he said about Dr. Flores is untrue. And Dr. Natarajan could have found that out by just doing the most cursory of investigations to check out the allegations in this comment to a news article on the Internet. And, and so here's what I think. Dr. Natarajan has just proven to all of us that he's willing to be untruthful in an effort to – defend his position in this case and get rid of Dr. Flores. And I think it's despic- despicable, and I think it's desperate. What What is the goal uh, here at the end of the day uh, for, for for you, doctor, uh, and, and, and for this case? Uh, what are you trying to seek uh, from, from Lubbock County, from, this, from the medical examiner? What, what, what do you all want at the end of the day? Uh, for me... Um, as I stated, since the very beginning to the DA and the commissioners and human resources, is that things need to be done correctly. Things need to be done according to the law. We have to follow the law in order to do properly our job. Our job is like so important. It can put some, someone that is innocent in jail or allow someone that is guilty to walk out free. That's 
that has always been my concern, and that's why I wanted the things to be fixed. And Chad, as as Dr. Flores's lawyer, I've tried to I've tried to follow that. And before we filed this lawsuit, we gave the county, the DA, everybody, the medical examiner's office, a chance to do exactly what Dr. Flores just said: fix it, do an investigation, find out what the problem is, let's resolve this. Couldn't be done. So uh, now my job is there are there are basically two remedies being sought. One remedy against the county itself, and one remedy against Dr. Natarajan individually. The county is responsible under the Whistleblower Act that protects people like Dr. Flores who come forward reporting in good faith illegal activities and suffer retaliation. Dr. Flores has lost her job. She's going to have to go out and start over. She's probably not going to be able to find a job making what she was making. She's also, this has been extremely traumatic to her. I mean, one day <clears throat> she's just trying to do the right thing. The next thing she's suffering intense harassment and retaliation. The day she asked to file a grievance, they suspended her. Mm-hmm. It's been tough. And the third thing, of course, is attorney's fees. Under the Act, which I think is a very good law, allows her to do this because if, we, if we're successful, the county will be responsible for her attorney's fees. As to Dr. Natarajan, outside his official capacity, in an attempt to manipulate the staff members and get them to side with him against her so he could complete his retaliation, he told them things that were not true. He, he, the same kind of things he says in his lawsuit. She's an illegal alien. She's dangerous. She's a criminal. She's crazy. He used the same playbook with the staff. Now, now we say that's not part of his official duties as the medical examiner. That's outside. And if it's outside his duties as medical examiner, he is personally responsible for those libelous and slanderous remarks. And we are seeking damages directly against him out of his bank account for for damaging Dr. Flores's reputation. Now, were there were there ever um uh you know when, when Lubbock County beforehand, uh, when they had uh, done performance reviews, had had they ever come up with anything? Uh, because they said that you were fired for insubordination uh, and, and 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 other things. Uh, from what uh, have been produced, they've never said that before. That that's something that was basically brand new. Is that correct? Yes. In in, in the year and a half. Prior that I have been working there, there was never a complaint. Uh, according to him, I was an excellent employee. He wrote a letter to the commissioners uh, praising my, my skills, my professional ability, requesting a raise. Then he took me in front of two of the commissioners in... November, uh, November 5th, and he also gave me an excellent evaluation in front of there, of, of them. So I have the letter that he wrote to the commissioners, the evaluation that he gave me in front of the commissioners, plus a $17,000 raise just at the end of 2014. As soon as he was informed that I had placed a complaint against him, I became the worst employee. He started nitpicking every single of my reports, claiming that I didn't do this, that I should have done that, that this is not the way it should be done. I always follow the name guidelines. Name is the... National Association of Medical Examiners. I always try to comply with all their guidelines and, of course, comply with the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure that indicates what things we should be doing. Uh, This office here is not accredited by name, but despite that, I was following the name guidelines because that's how I was trained. Right. And 
appreciate your time. We we got to take the break. When we come back, we'll uh, continue this uh, just for one more segment. Wrap up uh, after this next break. We'll be right back here on the Chad HD Show with Dr. Luisa Flores and Attorney Michael Kerensky. We'll be right back. All right, back on the Chad HD Show as we continue our uh, discussion with uh, Dr. Luisa Flores. And uh, Attorney Michael Kerensky, a, a, a lawsuit that's been filed uh, against both the uh, medical examiner and also uh, the uh, the county. Uh, tell us right now, uh, as far as uh, and as much as you can, uh, about the uh, uh, part of this lawsuit, obviously, was, was Dr. Flores, you were trying to get an investigation started into what you believed was illegal activity uh, in the medical examiner's office. Uh, where did that investigation head? Where are we in that investigation? Is there an investigation? You know, uh, that's a really good question because that, that's probably the source flaw of what happened is rather than treat this as a criminal investigation, it was passed over to the HR department, and they treated it more like an employment dispute. In fact, one of the first questions uh, the HR man at the county asked Luisa Flores is, are you just fishing for a severance package? to which she was appalled. And and the questions asked were, do you like Dr. Flores? Do you get along with her? Does she get along with Dr. Natarajan? Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Flores filed a grievance, said, I'm being retaliated against. Dr. Flores asked for uh, a hearing and a chance to present her evidence. Ignored, ignored, ignored. As far as we know, it's early in the lawsuit. More will come out. As far as we know, the first time anybody asked the question, do you know about some of these allegations of illegal activity by Dr. Natarajan, was after the lawsuit was filed. And have we learned anything since then? No. Um, I mean, we believe that the employees working for Dr. Natarajan were truthful. We, we have reports that they, they confirmed that Dr. Flores's good faith belief is true um, and that uh, – and, but, and that the lawyers for the county are finding this out for the first time because they're the first ones to ask the question. Lawsuits can take a while to play out. What, what do you think the timeline is, especially when you have two lawsuits and you have a whistleblower uh, lawsuit that's going on? What, what, what's the timeline that you're looking at? Right. We're, we're going to press hard. Uh, it's really up to the judge. Uh, most lawsuits take about 18 months to get prepared. We're going to ask the judge to try and put this on a, a what sometimes lawyers call a rocket docket. Uh, we think this is important, and we still think there's an opportunity that the county can still go back and and just do the right thing. And so, the quicker we find the facts, the quicker we get a trial setting, the sooner that opportunity will become evident. Okay, uh, and uh, we're we're about to run out of time. Uh, appreciate uh, uh, Dr. Flores. Appreciate you. Uh, coming on, telling your side of the story. And uh, Attorney uh, Michael Kerensky, thank you very much for coming in today. Thanks for having us. Appreciate your time. 